Hello, everyone. Welcome to CQC Creative Question Challenge. My name is Kazuko Tanaka from Hakuhodo, navigating you from Tokyo, Japan. I'll be the moderator for this talk session. The Creative Question Challenge is a new brainstorming session where speakers explore and present their creative questions in a 30-minute dialogue. Instead of trying to find for one answer or one solution, our goal is to explore the question from all angles and find more questions that help us envision the future. Our visualizer, Yorgos, will map keywords throughout the session to help us create by Yorgos, a compass that leads, to, leads us to a creative mission. Today, we have two very special guests, panelists, Lauren Lee McCarthy from US. Hi, Lauren. And Paolo Sirio from Italy. Hi, Paolo. Both prize winners of Pre Ars Electronica. So, shall we start the challenge? Our theme is autonomy and democracy. Autonomy and democracy. And I'd like to start this session with an initial question to start. So the question is, what is the difference between interdependence in cyberspace and physical space? What's the difference between the interdependence in cyberspace and physical space? Um, yeah, it's it, it's an interesting question and it's just posed to us. Um, but I think it's, I immediately feel like it's hard to answer because the two spaces are so interdependent on one another. Um, but if I were to start thinking about it, I think there's a way in which when we're operating in cyberspace or thinking about the internet, it's um, it's very easy for things to become inter interdependent and connected very quickly in ways that we may or may not understand. Um, just th thinking about kind of the speed at which things move. And in physical space, there's a little bit more of a um, barrier or it takes a little bit longer for things physically to uh, connect or to be moved from like one space to another. And so we feel that that time in a, a slightly different way. Um, but I think ultimately, like when, when you think about cyberspace and the infrastructure of it, it is dependent completely on physical space. So there's no way to um, really separate the two. And so if I kind of pull back and say, okay, well then if they're kind of the same, what is our difference in um, uh, understanding of it as people, I think uh, it, I'm here in LA where like California is on fire and then we're also on Zoom, you know, because of this pandemic. And I think there's a way in which the not navigating the interdependency of all of us online is something that's very new for a lot, a lot of people. Whereas you look out the window and you see the smoke or the flames and suddenly it's very clear how these systems are connected. So maybe we're, we have more of a, um, intuition for how physical space and the things in it are interdependent. Yeah, I think Lauren is very correct. Um, I was thinking the same. And um, um, I think this interdependency, um, look, I mean, looking at society um, and how um, social fields are connected and um, so when we talk about the economy, when we talk about the politics, and also our personal spheres are connected and interdependent, um, I think this really has been really like um, speed up by technology. And uh, I think uh, if we look back in the history of society, we also see how this interdependency um, incremented and also became much more faster. And it's true that now uh, this inter interdependency is even more connected to the physical world um, because everything we do um, is uh, so reflected in very physical, concrete, material elements. So if I if I think, uh, in, for instance, like about real estate and uh, how uh, Airbnb changed completely the shape of our cities. 
something is very concrete. But then if I think how we move faster throughout the world, or we were moving faster throughout the world, how easy it was like to take a flight um, and organize a trip uh, like from Japan to New York and Europe and so on. And that did affect our environment to the point that then we have uh, fires uh, next to our doors. And nevertheless, um, the, uh, how much energy we consume with the energy and how that has a reflection with the environment and eventually our uh, very physical world and our very, uh, also our health. And so, so yeah, there is a, a very increasing uh, level of interdependency between uh, the physical and the cyber world, if you want to call it like that. Does does, does that that speed up the speed and the more uh, the the how should I say uh, the connection of interdependency? Does does that have any effect on our democracy or our way of thinking towards democracy? Hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking it's um, like your work, Paulo, kind of shows some of some of it shows this so directly that we may have some policy in place or some, you know, structure of governance that depends on the physical or the virtual, but then these two spaces, um, are, it's so easy to circumvent one with the other. It seems you've kind of shown with some of your projects just by moving location or even just like virtually taking up space in another uh, country or, lo or location. So I think it makes the, um, the boundaries of these systems um, less clear or more difficult to um, sort of enact systems of governments around them. Yeah, I think uh, if we talk about speed and technology uh, uh, related to society, I what I often say is that the only uh, social fields that didn't like adjust to that speed is uh, politics and so it's democracy so if you think about the economy you know like finance just like went faster and uh, um, about ourselves how, how we move around the world and uh, even how we get informed in the battle the good of course that has accelerated a lot and um, politics the only field that didn't accelerate at all so we we vote we go for voting only every four years and um, a new law a new regulation takes years at least one year to be made and once it's made you cannot really change it or like takes very long time to change it change it or adjust so that is i think that's our real problem to the that's what i usually say because if we could enact law and we could also uh, change those law and improve them in almost real time uh, we could make huge improvements in society and you know we could fix issues social issues uh, much more faster mm -hmm. and um, and so yes yeah, so if, if you talk about democracy indeed that is the slowest thing we have at this point definitely mm. very interesting to hear speed in politics something mm. that's very <laughs> very that don't go together <laughs> no. for now well, no, do you yeah. think it, it is, is politics would would be speeded up with technology, or should we? I mean, I think it could. I mean, there are there are successful examples. They say in Taiwan, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, it did happen that they do have a platform that does work a little bit, but um, I think it's a generational issue. You know, like uh, politics is slow also because it's run by a generation that is very slow anyway, or at least it's not technologically advanced. And also I think the main problem is that technology so far has been seen as a separate field and is still pretty much run by technologists. And um, so until we don't embed the humanism and the politics within technology, those fields will stay separate. So, you know, I don't think like just a piece of technology can fix this problem. It's not going, it's not going to be blockchain, for instance, but 
having people using blockchain in a certain way in with some rules maybe but it's not blockchain i mean we already have the tools we don't need new tools we need like um, another you know agency and agenda yeah but i think um maybe it's technologists that are sort of owning the space of of technology development but we're also seeing just like mass organizing and movements happening on these platforms that do exist um, for better or worse. And it feels like they're just increasing in kind of momentum and speed and uh, power. So it, it feels to me, at least from my vantage point in this country, that there's um, that politics and government is starting to become a lot more reactive to the mm -hmm. um, what the people are doing or, you know, and um, so there's some way in which it feeds back that it still feels extremely slow and to watch them try to respond is almost um, comical sometimes, but um, I don't feel like it operates in a vacuum that um, politics is moving at one speed and everything else is moving at the other. It's like everything is moving at an increasing speed and um, there's some, I guess the hope is that we're able to maintain a democracy that can support what's happening um, or, or just, you know, guide us as a society and whether that <laughs> is possible or not, given the kind of infrastructure in, in place for politics, um, is a good question. So both physical and cyber, we're moving and we're accelerating speed at any, any some point, even in the technology and the politics. But in, in the beginning of the discussion, Lauren, you mentioned that cyberspace, it was more quickly connected and physical. There's a little bit of barrier and you need a little more time to be connected. Do you think that that difference is, 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 is that, does the difference itself have like an effect of good or bad, I don't know, in our uh, learning and inter interdependence of each other in the democracy or trying to uh, uh, acquire autonomy of us as, as, as citizens? Mm. Um, well, I think one thing that I've been seeing that's sort of interesting is I think we used to be able to move through physical space at much higher speeds and now that travel is limited and there's a lot more restrictions um, or people are just trying to stay and that doesn't happen so much um, or at quite the same speed. And I think there's people are turning a lot more towards local communities and local um, organizing and friends and just like realizing that as a structure. Um, at the same time, you have this, you know, cyberspace connection to many people in the world um, in many different places. Um, so I think that's definitely like giving us a, um, you know, it's funny because I started, I opened by saying that it, it feels like the physical space and cyberspace are so interconnected and normally I'm always making the argument that there's no difference between them. Um, but at, at this moment, it feels like we, um, we are feeling that difference. We are able to understand what it means to be physically with someone in a space versus um, virtually talking to someone else. And um, I, I'm curious to see how that plays out in terms of the way that we continue to develop and organize our local communities and, and our broader society. That was ominous. I think we're midway through. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would I would make um, a distinct make a make a difference between politics and democracy too. Um, in terms of like, uh, we do see politics like uh, speeding up through technology and through the internet mainly, but these mm -hmm. politics uh, can be pretty messy uh, and uh, can be very polarizing at the moment. And um, but I do agree with Lauren that. Um, talking about the local communities or real, actual 
interventions and change in the physical space, so in the lives of people, that is the real difference, which is also the ultimate result of democracy. So making uh, making like social justice and equality um, possible, which is um, <laughs> very difficult and is the process of democracy. Yeah, I mean, this is playing out in one really uh, concrete way right now where we're coming up in a, an election and um, one political party is recommending that everybody vote in person. And the other political party is recommending that everybody stay home and stay safe and mail in their votes. But there's questions about whether um, the, the votes will get there in time. Um, so it, it's a sort of interesting um, you know, we think this is it's so kind of virtual and that we're watching these people, you know, these messages are coming through the media and through the internet. And yet it may actually come down to like physical, you know, pieces of paper moving through the mail that could determine the direction of our democracy going forward. Well, and before they were like uh, electronic voting machines. Right, right, which yeah. They don't work well anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what's better. Yeah. Which which could which which would so where is our trust? Where is our trust in the physical and cyber? Um, well, trust I think is uh, also made by the interdependencies of many layers and. Um, and it's like a, and it's definitely a, it's a from the foundations of democracy, and uh, it is uh, something that could also be um, more um, accelerated uh, through technology, uh, I believe. But again, uh, only if human values stay at the very center of this process. And um, and so and if, so if we talk about trust, maybe we should talk about reputation, for instance. And uh, what is uh, you know what is who, are, who, who is going to judge that uh, uh, reputation and uh, which are the values uh, around that, uh, which has to do with uh, opinions and which which has to do with um, you know information circulating a certain way. And so until we rely on uh, algorithms of social media, for instance, I don't think we could trust anyone, <laughs> even if they are, even if on the social media, on the internet, they look uh, um, very, um, you know, that you can trust reliable. Yeah, I think it's a hard one right now. I, I'm, I don't know if people are even, um, striving for trust so much as just a kind of enough sense of stability to maintain or survive. Um, and I mean, I think one of the things with trust, I mean, Paolo was just mentioning the kind of um, opacity of, of algorithms and, and just these systems around us that um, there's very, it feels very difficult to trust anything larger like that, um, especially thinking about the way that we deal with news and truth and information right now. Um, and you see that like playing out with QAnon, for example, right? There's this huge, huge number of people that are just believing something else. <laughs> um, but I, I think what, when I think about personal relationships, trust comes from having some sense of vulnerability, mutual vulnerability, right? That you are putting yourself in someone's hands and they're putting their self in yours. So how do you do that with a, with a system or with a politic? I, I'm, I don't think we have clear ideas for that yet. Um, but I think also looking at the past and looking at what has been done before and what has worked and who have you know, it's hard to know, I think, sometimes if you're on the right side of history or not, but looking back in the past, it becomes more clear. So what, what can we learn from that? And can we trust some of the lessons that um, those before us or the mistakes that they've made, can, can we try to build on top of that rather than building on whatever is said right in this moment? Well, 
vulnerability, putting your putting yourself putting yourself into someone's hands and you receiving someone others and how we can do that in cyberspace, like how we've been doing in physical space, maybe. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm always trying to like get intimate with systems to just see if there is some potential for that vulnerability there. Um, but it's, it, it feels like it, you need to have some understanding of who the person on the other side is and not necessarily knowing them, but just knowing that they are be able to conceptualize them as a, as a person, I think helps. And so then when we start to scale up in these systems or with, as the speed increases, that gets much harder. Yeah, it's, um, it's something I've been saying uh, for a while uh, in terms of like empathy and how there is a lack of empathy on the internet. And, um, and cyberspace looks like a wild west um, territory where uh, you are allowed to kill anyone and destroy everyone and there is no pity and there is no empathy at all. And, um, and I think the reason is because the, 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 the cyberspace is not considered inter interdependent to human values. So it's like, mm -hmm. like, I don't know why we still think that on the internet, everything is uh, allowed as you know, abuse is allowed actually. And um, and so that is not fine and it comes with a very old notion of the internet. I don't think abuse should be allowed on the internet and until there is that, of course, the stronger and the bully is gonna win, whatever is a politician or whatever is an algorithm. And, um, and it's very disappointing that there are people out there that they don't understand this yet. And so they don't want, I mean, they are worried to police the internet, but there is a, a huge different, different difference between policing or having empathy, you know, it's like, uh, it's a very huge difference. Mm. So that can, should we take a look at uh, the keywords that we mapped here? So, we were talking about how the the difference of um, the mediums of, of the physical and the cyber, and and how yeah how the politics have not accelerated it. the politics po everything speeding up except for politics, and how. Yeah, people are starving with trust for a reputation for a cyberspace. And yeah, finally, we we're talking about the lack of empathy and an internet, a modern wild west. So what would be our, 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 our creative mission or, or a question that we need to keep thinking about when we are talking about autonomy and democracy? Um, well, maybe thinking that the cyberspace is not that autonomous and instead like as uh, interdependent to other human values. Um, maybe if we are talking about autonomy and uh, cyberspace, that could be a suggestion. What's the human values that we need to think about in cyberspace? Yeah, and technology, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still thinking about this question of trust or just like thinking about it in physical space too, that there's certain kind of rules of the physical world that we place some trust or reliance on. And what are those, you know, maybe it goes along with what you're saying. What are the values and what are the kind of rules or, or um, uh, footholds that we can place some, some trust in when we're navigating in cyberspace? Holes, navigation of trust in cyberspace. That sounds very promising. <laughs> no way. I don't if know. If we can how. find an answer. <laughs> sure. Yeah, if we, we if we can find those footholds. How do we find those footholds of footholds of trust in cyberspace? Oh, well, that's very difficult. I was doing a project a while ago that was about um, like a direct democracy in the cyberspace and um, one or two of those um, 
research and diagrams focuses more on trust and reputation. And um, there are many variables that, you know, apply to that. And, um, and nevertheless, I did a project about the right to be forgotten. That's also like about reputation and trust. And that's also a very complicated process. But it's very human, you know, it's like a very something that um, takes a lot of empathy as well. And, uh, and the time uh, and um, yeah, it's not it's not easy. It's like hard as much in, as in the physical world. What happens if you uh, you meet a stranger in front of you and how do you trust the stranger in front of you <laughs> like for the first time? Um, so it's not an easy answer, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, it takes time. I think that's one thing you're just saying, Paolo, is like, um, you don't instantly trust most people that stand in front of you. Um, and yet we're expected to instantly trust a lot of these systems. Um, so how, and then things, the, the speed at which things move continues to increase. So how, I don't know, how do we build time into that process? It would be interesting to see if there's a way that we can understand maybe so that we can see who to trust and who not to trust. In physical space, you don't actually trust everyone, but at least you know who to trust and who not to trust. Yeah. Well, I do think there are metrics. It's not, I mean, actually internet does provide uh, more um, tools if you want more data if you want about uh, strangers online um, you know but um, you know that that should be read also in a different way I mean uh, really depending what is the context I mean if we are talking about the politicians it's very different compared to a citizen and uh, if you're talking about a business also it really depends what kind of business and so unfortunately what happens with technology in the in the in the cyberspace that we actually don't use that data in a meaningful way, even if we have it, I think. So there are potentials there um, eventually, but again, even if you have data about uh, someone that you want to trust, how many layers of privacy do you want to apply? You know, that is like a sophistication that we are not having yet. And those are like design um, or technology um, developments that can be done, but um, unfortunately we don't use it. Also because so far I think cyberspace for us is like a very kind of like a out there space and we don't really use it in the right way. Thank you, thank you. So maybe we need to start keep talking about the human values, what human values in cyberspace. So thank you too for joining us for the CQC. Thank you audience, see you again.